Published 1257 Eastern Daylight Saving Time, the 30th of March 2018. Updated 1431 Eastern Daylight Saving Time, the 30th of March 2018. Two Londoners who were part of the ISIS beheading gang dubbed the Beatles and helped to capture, torture, and kill more than 20 Western hostages have given an astonishing interview from captivity. The two men El Shafi El Sheikh, 29, known as George and Alexander Amen Cody, 34, known as Ringo criticized Britain for revoking their citizenship and claimed they will not get a fair trial wherever it takes place, Cody said the execution of hostages including journalist James Foley and Brit Alan Henning by Jihadi John in propaganda videos was regrettable and tried to shift the blame from himself. They spoke to the Associated Press in an interview from their captivity Friday in northern Syria, the first to a media outlet since their detention. Scroll down for video Londoners Alexander Amen Cody, left, known as Ringo, and El Shafi El Sheikh, known as George, gave the damning interview from their cap. The video Shafi El Sheikh and Alexander Amen Cody were captured in early January in eastern Syria by the U.S.-backed Syrian Democratic Forces. In the interview, they slammed the audacity of the British government for its illegal decision to strip their citizenship. They did not admit any involvement in hostage takings or beheadings. Alexander Amen Cody reads a Mile Online article about his British citizenship being revoked while detained in Syria. Pictured Kurdish security escorts the two blindfolded British ISIS Beatles members at a security center in Kobani, Syria. Cody left blamed Western governments for the deaths of some of their victims. He said hostages died because governments refused to negotiate ransoms. The cell became known for its brutality, holding in captivity more than 20 Western hostages, and torturing and killing several, including American, British and Japanese journalists and aid workers, in 2014 and 2015. Though they spoke of their membership in the Islamic State group, they did not admit to belonging to the cell or to have been involved in any of the kidnappings or killings. El Shi called the allegations, propaganda, asked about the beheadings of American journalist James Foley and other victims, Cody said many in ISIS would have disagreed with the killings, on the grounds that there is probably more benefit in them being political prisoners, El Shi, left 29, and Cody, 34, were captured in Syria in January while trying to escape to Turkey, according to Kurdish-led forces. The alleged killers, pictured being transported to a security center, said the UK revoking their citizenship denies them fair trial. Though they spoke of their membership in the Islamic State group, they did not admit to belonging to the cell or to have been involved in any of the kidnappings or killings. For my position, I didn't see any benefit. It was something that was regrettable, he added. He also blamed Western governments for failing to negotiate, in noting that some hostages were released for ransoms. The leader of the cell, Mohammed M. Wazi, was dubbed Jihadi John in the British media after he appeared, masked, in a string of videos showing beheadings of the hostages. He was killed in a U.S.-led coalition drone strike in 2015 in the Syrian city of Raqqa, the de facto is capital. Another member, Anya Leslie Davis, was arrested in Turkey and convicted there in 2017, sentenced to seven years in prison. Cody and El Sheikh were captured by the Kurdish-led Syrian Democratic Forces and identified by fingerprints and other biometric means, according to anonymous U.S. Officials speaking to the New York Times, they were carrying mobile phones and other electronic equipment, which intelligence officials have gleaned for information. American spies will be especially keen to quiz the pair on the locations of surviving ISIS militants hiding out along the Euphrates River Valley near the border between Syria and Iraq. And officials will hope the men will have information about other hostages, such as the British journalist John Cantley, who was abducted with his U.S. colleague James Foley in 2012 and has appeared in a series of ISIS propaganda videos. El Sheikh, whose family came to Britain from Sudan when he was a child, was a mechanic from White City in West London. Cody, who is of Ghanaian and Greek Cypriot descent and converted to Islam in his 20s, is from London's Paddington neighborhood. Both have been interrogated by U.S. officials since their capture. El Sheikh traveled to Syria in 2012, initially joining Al-Qaeda's branch before moving on to his, according to the U.S. State Department's listing of the two men for terrorism sanctions. It said he earned a reputation for waterboarding, mock executions and crucifixions while serving as an is jailer. Cody served as a guard for the execution cell and likely engaged in the group's executions and exceptionally cruel torture methods, including electronic shock and waterboarding, the State Department said. In the interview, the two men denounced the media for the spreading allegations of the Beatles cell, at one point depicting the accusations as concocted as a pretext to kill them with drone strikes in Syria, no fair trial, when I am back, quote the Beatle in the media.
no fair trial, El Sheik said. They also denounced as illegal the British government's decision in February to strip them of citizenship. The decision was widely reported in British media, though officials have not confirmed or denied it, citing privacy rules. The revocation of citizenship exposes them to rendition and torture, El Sheik said, being taken to any foreign land and treated in any way and having nobody to vouch for you, when you have these two guys who don't even have any citizenship, if we just disappear one day, where is my mom going to go and say where is my son, he said. The capture of the two men has sparked a debate over where and how to prosecute them. The U.S has been pressing for the home countries of foreign jihadis in Iraq and Syria to take their nationals for trial. Mohammed M. Wazi, who was killed in a U.S. airstrike in 2015, appeared in a number of videos in which captives including British aid workers David Haynes and Alan Henning were beheaded. Britain's defense secretary has said they should not be allowed back into the country. Former captives of the cell and families of its victims have called on Al Sheik and Cody to be given a fair trial, whether in the United States or Britain. The pair were captured amid fears they were trying to return to the UK intending to bring bloodshed to British streets, along with Mohammed Mwazi, the killer nicknamed Jihadi John, pictured, and Anya Davis. Cody and Al Sheik are believed to have been part of a group named after the Beatles because of their English. Accents officials hope that both Britain's capture may lead to information on what happened to remaining hostages, including British journalist John Cantley, who appeared in a series of propaganda videos and then vanished. It is also hoped that they may yield information about the whereabouts of their victims' bodies, along with Mohammed Mwazi, the killer nicknamed Jihadi John, and Anya Davis. The pair are thought to have been part of a group named after the 60s band because of their English accents. The four Londoners were linked to dozens of hostage murders in Iraq and Syria while serving under the self-styled caliphate. Jihadi John was killed in an airstrike in 2015 in Syria. A fourth man, Anya Davis, is imprisoned in Turkey on terrorism charges. The U.S. government said the Beatles beheaded more than 27 hostages, according to the State Department. Cody, likely engaged in the group's executions and exceptionally cruel torture methods, including electronic shock and waterboarding. Cody also acted as an ISIS recruiter and was responsible for recruiting several Brits to join the murderous organization. The State Department said El Sheik was said to have earned a reputation for waterboarding, mock executions and crucifixions while serving as an ISIS jailer. Former child refugee El Sheik supported Queen's Park Ranger and worked as a fairground mechanic. He was born in Sudan, but his family fled the country and came to Britain in the early 1990s. El Sheik became heavily influenced by the sermons of a West London imam known for his radical beliefs. The fourth member, Davis, was convicted of being a member of a terrorist organization and jailed for seven and a half years at a court in Silivri, Turkey. In May 2017 his father, Rashid Saddam at El Sheik, a translator and poet living in London, said his son had traveled to Syria to fight for jihadis at the start of 2012. He described his son's radicalization as, lightning fast. He said, we tried to handle this in a mild, considerate way but before we could do anything, he just left. El Sheik's mother, Maya El Ghazoli, said El Sheik was the middle son of three raised alone by her after the family moved to Britain. But she said he was affected badly when his eldest brother Khalid was sentenced to 10 years in prison for possessing a firearm after the killing of a gang member involved in a dispute with the family. El Sheikh's younger brother, Mahmoud, was killed fighting for ISIS in Iraq last year after following him to the War zone is a 17-year-old, Salah Al-Bander, a former Cambridge Liberal Democrat councillor who raised the alarm about El Sheikh's journey to Syria in 2012, said he had a stall outside Shepherd's Bush tube station from which he used to preach, adding that, he was, completely transformed, into a radical in a short period. He told The Guardian, El Shafi was a really very quiet, kind, reflective young person. In a very short period of time, I mean weeks, he turned to be very radicalized, with very strong views about everything. Cody, also a QPR supporter, was from Paddington and raised in a Greek Orthodox family. Neighbors said he was a reserved, polite boy. He converted to Islam after falling in love with a Muslim woman and had two daughters with her. In January 2017, U.S. authorities named Cody as a member of the cell and said they had imposed sanctions on him. Davis, a former tube driver and drug dealer from Hammersmith in West London who went to Syria in 2013, reportedly told a BBC journalist to F asterisk 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 off when asked to comment on the verdict. According to the BBC, Davis was asked in court about his involvement with the terror cell and denied involvement, I am not ISIS. I went to Syria because there was oppression in my country, he said.
Dais is thought to have converted to Islam shortly after being jailed in the UK in 2006 for possessing a firearm, the son of a dinner lady and a John Lewis shop worker, he took the name Hamza and travelled the Middle East, he befriended Amwazi at a mosque in West London shortly before leaving for Syria, he is believed to have travelled to Syria in late 2012, where he fought for ISIS, he abandoned four children by two different mothers when he left Britain on a flight to Amsterdam. In 2014 Davis's wife, Amal El Wahhabi, then 27, became the first woman to be jailed for terrorism offenses connected to Syria after she was caught paying a smuggler to take 20,000 euros, 17,000 pounds, in cash to Turkey for her husband, she was jailed. For two years, Mohammed M. Wazi later became the most reviled man in the world as ISIS's most notorious executioner Jihadi Dian Kuwaiti born Mohammed M. Wazi, became the most reviled man in the world as ISIS's most notorious executioner Jihadi John. However, reports suggest he obtained